What kind of things were you into as a kid? Like, you know, you, you new to the West Coast, you... So as a kid in Texas or the kid in the West Coast? Both. So I'm a kid in Texas, believe it or not, I used to watch the news and hang with grown folks all day. So my, my thing was, I love school. Do you feel like that made you a, a older soul? I think a little bit. Like, cause like if you hang around me, you'll know like, damn, this nigga is just a, either grumpy or old or just a lot of the kiddie stuff I wasn't, I couldn't do. So like in Texas, you, we about to say May, so you might remember our parents and our aunties, uncles that had a red light parties. On Fridays, they put the red bulb in, they drink their mad dog, Cisco. So I would sneak and get drink. They're like, boy, get your bad ass out of here. But then my auntie be like, leave him alone. And so she would let me change the vinyl on the parliament. So you gotta put the quarter on there because it was a messed up. So she would let me change the vinyl. And she could come dance with your auntie. So I used to be dance with my auntie. That's where I got into Michael Jackson. That's how I got into Prince. That's how I got into the music. I never, bro, I didn't hear rap really till I came to California. I never heard rap until I came to California. I was on soul, R&B and shit like that. And like whatever they listened to. So that kind of made me different. I didn't like video games because I was, we was, I come from the air where go outside to the lights out. To the street lights, come on, you stay outside. And then so I'm hanging around the drug dealers and hustle. Like, okay, I'm gonna go over to the park because you niggas are scared to go. But my cousin and my daddy over there, so I'm gonna go see what they own. I watched them play basketball. Hey, what's up? And let's go to the candy lady. So bam, bam, bam. So like, I'm used to hanging out. Like in the, in the projects, if y'all don't know, go to the Nickersons, go to Jordan Down, go to Imperial Courts. I love all of them. I've been to all of them. The projects you hang out in the parking lot or at the park that we hanging out. Why? Because that's just, you don't want to miss nothing. The pride, that's just, you can tell a project baby because they like to hang out, get faded. So when we moved to California, Orange County, the first thing I did, I went on my street, Colchester, of Burgerson Ball. I'm like looking up and down the street like, there ain't nobody outside. My cousin already live out here, so I'm like, hey, ain't nobody outside? No, we don't hang out. Man, where your friends at? Let's go hang outside. So I got them niggas hanging in front of the apartments. White people looking like, what? It's new for them. It's new for them. So I said, man, listen, we're going to hop on a bus, go to the beach. Y'all ready? They're like, we got, we can get, no, we're going to hop on this bus. So we used to hop straight down Brookhurst, go to the beach. They be like, my mom be like, where you at? I was like, we was at the beach. So I don't know how long you've been out here, but on Brookhurst and Ball, there used to be a movie theater, the Brookhurst Theater. It used to be an arcade right there. I said, look, we finna hang out there in the arcade and see some chicks there. We finna go to, they're like, bro, we, we're just going to go. And they used to be tripping off that, like, nigga, nah, that's what we do. Even to this day, you'll see me post me on the app hanging out. That era was different because my mom, she trusted me. She knew I was already, under, I understood the streets already. We, I'm never finna hop in your car. I don't know you. I ain't eating nothing from you. I'm not drinking nothing from you. I'm not, you don't know my mom because I don't know you. So you, my mom did not send you to pick me up. She don't even know you. And I knew my mom, like my mom taught me real street lessons. Like, like a lot of people don't know this, walk against traffic. You never walk with traffic the way you post. You walk against traffic. Walk with your head up. Don't have your music blasting. Take one out. Like be aware of your surroundings. Like I know one time, I know how to get wherever I go one time. You ain't got to tell me twice. Once I've been there once, I know how to get there twice. That's just some shit my mama taught me. And that was the project, you feel me? Always aware of cops. Not because I'm doing something wrong, because where we come from, they kill us. So I'm like, oh, there's some police over there. Let's go this way. You feel me? Or our thing was, if they shoot and get down, just get out. Don't try to look. That's how people get shot, trying to look. So when I came over here, the culture was different. The biggest thing different, and I want to say this the right way because I don't want to lie or cap. Police wouldn't harass us, but at night, I noticed they with flashes. Like, what you doing out this late? Like, it's barely eight. That, if you notice even to this day, at when the sun goes down in Orange County, there's no bodies just out. If you do even ask yourself, think, ask yourself, when you go out and you see driving by a McDonald's or anything, you see a, more than three people, you look like, man, what they doing? And you drive on. That's not the culture out here. You feel me? And another big thing is, you know, if you a real nigga, you from any real nigga city, you look for Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. I said, ain't no Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, this bitch. That's where the niggas gonna be at. No, no, I had to, it was crazy how I made my way to find niggas in Santa Ana. That's, that's it. it took, that was the journey. Tell me about it. So, uh, 95, 95, this is when Death Row was jumping. You know 95. So, at that time, and I don't care, none of y'all out there, y'all can lie and put extras on it. Everybody wanted to be Death Row or Pac. You either wanted to be Snoop, Pac, Dre, that was my thing. We wanted to be Pac because we was young. Thug life, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna do what I want. We in these streets. We drinking and everything. So, I moved to Palma Vista. Palma Vista Locos on uh, Catella and Euclid, right? So my, my mama is cool with Carrie Bell. 
My sister's cool with Ricky Bell. I'm playing basketball with Rodney Bell, and Lamont Bell just got out of prison. Kid Love from Watergate, ladies from Watergate, Bogart from Watergate. This is who I meet on the street. Like, hey, little nigga, come here, cuz. I'm like, what's up? Ooh, you know, like, where you from? I'm like, well, I'm from Texas, nigga. What the fuck is you from? I'm like, fucking 13. What, what is, what is, they're like, oh, you know where you at? I'm like, yes, yeah, Mexican. So they cool my mama, so they kind of take me in. They're like, look, this is where the niggas hang. We in Santa Ana with it. These grown ups have cars, they teach you play basketball. That's how I basically introduced to Watergate, becoming from Watergate. Like, that's the introduction. When I go to Santa Ana, I see the rich black culture. I'm like, oh, okay, we good. Even though there's still no Martin Luther King Jr. Street, but this is where niggas at. On the west side, you know, 92703 or Furs, you know, Willis, um, you got Ray, you know, 500 Daisy. We all over there, uh, Bandale, Diamond, and all that. So I'm meeting everybody. But after I meet them, my mom go to jail, so I end up living in Anaheim again. So now I'm not seeing them. So now it's back to normal program. But what happens is mom gets out, moves to uh, Progressive Broadway where she's at now, and now it's a lot of Santa Ana niggas on Lincoln Ave. This is where the Ave comes into play. They all on Ave, so I go over there when they like, oh, so-and-so, so they're like, hey, that's the homie. So in the 90s, if you know 90s culture, once you dub the homie, it's no turning back. It's like, you know, that's the homie. So Enemigo is gonna say, oh, that's the nigga from here. That's where he from. That's where he from. And it's crazy because you can have a, this is one thing I'll tell you about, about gang banging. And if you, I think if you might, our age or up, the down, the lower age don't really understand this. You can start middle school with somebody. In high school, you guys drift apart. He become a blood, you become a crib, or you from different sets, and now y'all got a low key. Yeah, that's the enemy, but that's my boy. I played basketball with him. I played football with him. So that's how I found the black community, which, which is how a lot of niggas find uh, black communities through gangs. Simple and plain. And if you know the, you remember the 90s, it was a way different ball game. It's, you know, we wearing Dickies, uh, Chucks, the belt, long belt with the with the initial on it, and that signified what he was. He got a blue belt with blue chuck. That nigga's a crip with a Dallas jacket, a starter jacket. If y'all know, they might not know what a starter bomber jacket is. This was a jacket. Starter was kind of like, what can I compare starter to now? Champion. How y'all like champion? Starter was that back in the day. Champion was bullshit. Champion was that fucking wall, Kmart. You was a bum nigga wearing champion back then. Starter, you wanted to, it was three starter jackets that signified where you was from. Dallas Cowboys meant you was a crip. UNLV or Red Wings mean you was a blood, simple and plain. And the Raiders was neutral. You could be a blood or a crip, you know, it just depends, a Raider bomber jacket. Alternatives like uh, Georgetown Hoyers, that was like alternative. But um, that's what the culture was. And it, it was, you was banging everywhere you went, not verbally, but what you wore. From Pendleton's, Ben Davis, and we were still wearing croaker sack hats, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Hush puppies, corduroy house shoes. It was just different. You like it was no room for goofy shit, as we say. Mm -hmm.